Yo, 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 new day, new day. I have been playing some uh, Ori and the Will of the Wisp recently, and I am about to butcher every single name um, in that entire game. Uh, I could, of course, just not use names and just say, like, oh, it's a Toad Guy uh, or something, because that's what he is. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm gonna do that. So, Ori and the Will of the Wisp, right? It's a, it, it's a game, it's a game, it is very, how I found out apparently, it is very Donkey Kong coded. Um, you know, when I'm just home on break from, from life, you know, home with my parents, uh, I have my Wii set up, or our Wii set up, and I'm currently on a very long journey to complete Donkey Kong Country Returns. Uh, I think there's a Country Returns 2 coming out to the Switch, uh, or to the new Switch. I still, I, I don't know, have they announced any updates on how how life is going for the Switch 2? I don't know, I feel like it should be about time that I start hearing new updates, or at least, you know... I think there was some sort of convention where they actually went and, you know, got it tested out in the public. So I'm surprised I haven't, that, that's like months ago, so I'm surprised I haven't heard anything about it. I don't think it's too different from the Switch in general, I just think it's like better, better graphics, better, just better stats in general. Um, but I really don't know, I think Country Returns 2 is gonna be on the Switch, and I think it's gonna be a lot, I, I think I've seen some trailers, this is a long time ago, so it might not be correct. Um, I'm pretty sure it's just like a remake. It's not actually a sequel. It's just a remake um, Maybe or maybe Country returns uh, the one I'm playing is a remake and I, they are are making a sequel to the remake uh, I'm not sure. I'm I don't know. I don't know. I'm just I'm just spouting rumors that I have no validity spouting um but yeah, Ori and the Will of the Wisp is very Donkey Kong coded in the, at least in the platforming department. It's a way more platformy game than I remembered. Uh, the thing is, I on my Switch I do have Ori and the Will of the Wisp. I uh, yeah, I got it a long time ago and just you know never really finished it. I played it a, like a decent amount, but I never really finished it because I just I don't know skill issue I guess. Um, I don't know, I just got stuck somewhere and didn't know where the hell to go. Also because all the all the marks on the map, I didn't know what the hell they meant. And I couldn't bother finding out. And now I have actually, you know, fucked around and found out. Uh, and by found out, I mean, you know, I don't know, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. Uh, which is apparently pretty good. I think I'm almost done with the game, unless there's like a whole nother section. Which I don't think there is. Um, which, I don't know, it might actually be worth it to just like finish the game today slash tonight and just just yap about it then. Because I don't think I have much of the game left, but I don't know, I don't know. I'm just, I don't know, I'm just spitballing here. But in general, the game is about you as this little fucking chipmunk you are, this little shiny glowing chipmunk. Um, just running around trying to find your your homie, your buddy, your uh, owl owl person uh, who's been lost. They've just been lost for like I don't know since the start of the game. Um, I actually can't really remember the backstory, but they were taken uh, at some point by some big uh, big fly guy. I don't know, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's canon that I, you as the player, you you don't know what the hell is happening and the, the, the character doesn't know what's happening either. So one day you just wake up and your best buddy is gone. Um, so you go out searching for them because their family has apparently also gone searching for them. I don't actually know where their family is right now. I don't know, I saw some sort of cutscene with them, you know, you have to, like, I don't know, you are a little, 
a little glowing chipmunk. Then you have the owl. You're you're like, I guess you kind of siblings. Um, then you have your two parents, a big fat guy and <sighs> Skinwalker. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, but they are on an adventure right now. They are. They were just kind of gone when you woke up, right? So you were just kind of left alone in the world. Because, you know, they went out looking for the owl... The, the owl fella. And you're just using... The, you're just spending the entire game just... Wandering. Just finding out what the hell is going on. Just... I don't know. The first time you actually... You actually encounter your owl... Your owl fella pretty early on. Uh, which I didn't expect, at least the first time around. Uh, of course, I do remember... Um, I, I do remember a lot of things from the base game, but I didn't remember there was this much story to it. Uh, I say the base game as if this, you know, the first time around I was... I don't know, I got like halfway through the game and then I... I just kind of gave up. Uh, for s some reason. Um... But yeah, the uh, yeah, hmm. I'm trying to remember where I actually went. Okay, so I I went first time around. I'm pretty sure I just wandered around until I found, you know, the uh, the owl guy. Then I got yeah because I I went up to Bower, the uh, the bear guy. That's like one of the only names I can remember. Don't get used to me spouting names here uh, but I went up to Bauer and he said like oh um go to go to the peak and then I went to the peak and then you know got chased down by the by the big bad guy uh, oh yeah by the way the big bad guy is a big like I don't know bird thingy it's not it, it's, it's kind of like a raven but I don't know it's, it's some sort of mythical creature who is just I don't fucking know. He walks around on uh, on his wings, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's it's really fucking creepy, and it's meant to be like kind of eerie and creepy. So I I don't know. Points for that, I guess. Uh, he's actually kind of an intimidating enemy, also because you feel when you are as small as you are, you feel completely hopeless. And also, all the, like, small power-ups and stuff you get, you all, like, you feel more powerful, not because you're, you know, of course, because you actually get better at the game, because that's how games work. Um, so you just get more confident in your gaming abilities uh, and your skills, but you also just, you know, you feel powered up somehow by all the NPCs you meet and, like, rescue you. You know, I didn't get this the first time around, but you're going around and basically just re re-energizing re like uh unfucking this the the entire forest that this takes place in you know orion the uh, will of the forest um i don't know i know there's a game called that i don't know if it's a prequel or sequel who knows um Anyway, I was about to say something profound. Uh, just you're just gonna have to trust me on that. God damn it! So, essentially, what I what I've done so far is that I've went up, you know, gotten chased down, and my buddy died. Uh, oh yeah, uh, spoiler alert, I guess. Uh, you find your owl guy friend, and they die fucking immediately. Uh, you have like a little chase sequence. You actually, it, it's kind of cool the mechanics you have with the with, with the chase sequence. You kind of, you know, you use your your kind of abilities with you, the owl guy. You know, the owl guy actually being able to not really fly because he's kind of he's kind of retarded, um, but he's actually able to like flap his wings a little bit. So that's pretty cool. Uh, just like the mechanics are pretty goaded overall. Uh, movement just feels so fluid and you know I've heard a lot of people say that this is just a Hollow Knight copy a copy and I I, I I get where they're coming from sure uh, 
but it's not it's not too bad it's mostly because all the uh, all the NPCs just say like fucking inaudible shit all the time uh, that's probably the main like crossover between the two not really crossover but you know um, similarity between the two so that's a that's a whole thing um, I don't know, I haven't delved too much into the community of this, but I, I expect there to be, like, way less of a community between the... But, uh, it, you know, the game is cool, the movement is cool and all, but it just... The game feels so much smaller compared to Hollow Knight. Even though it's probably physically way bigger. But I guess that's the point of Hollow Knight, you are, you are like, a little, really small fella. Uh, traversing this big area uh, you, you know again you are literally just a bug and every it's everything you meet here is just a bug uh, you see zero up here he is just a fucking bug but you know I get to here I get to interact with a literal bear uh, again just like some of them some of the some of the guys I come across are you know not normal fucking animals, but some of them are. Again, there's the toad guy that you know the first uh, the first main guy you the first main I don't I don't really know they they each hold like some sort of they each hold a will of the wisp if you you know if you will uh, they sort of they guard an area they all tell you tragic backstory. Uh, they all tell you tragic backstories of how they, you know, this uh, this place used to uh, used to f uh, I don't know, it used to be cool. Now it's not cool, uh, essentially. And please fix it. Uh, that actually reminds me of a chase scene all the, like all the way in the all the way in the start of the game. Uh, not really start of the game. Yeah, uh, kind of. Uh, early to mid game um when you're fixing the water wheel for the frogman there is a chase sequence uh where the monkey guy from the village i actually i really like the village i also like that you can upgrade oh, i have so much to say i need to slow the fuck down um i really like that the village you know, you, you actually have a big influence on the village, and you feel like you are... I I really like the gimmick of the guy just hiding in the bushes, and he conveniently knows of literally everything you do, because he's been keeping track of you, but that's, you know, that's his whole shtick, is that he he's very good at hiding, but he just has stats of everything you do. And that's like, you know, basically the stat, the stat book stats, site right? Where we can see like, oh, how many, how many times have I jumped? Uh, how many, how much damage have I taken? You know, so, so on and so forth. Um, I don't know. I just like the fact that it's incorporated so creatively into a character. I don't know. He's a, he's a goofy gobber. I, I love the guy. Um... Also, I thought that there was something really funny, but apparently not. Um, when you go to the place where the where the main bad guy lives, the the I don't even know. I still don't know what to call the guy. Um, but when you go into like the the Greylands, I God, I, I I can't even remember like location names. This is bad. Um, when you go into the Greylands where the where the bad guy is, and he like you know after the chase sequence when you actually get to just like kind of explore the place, one of the first things you you um you encounter is the the family uh, of one of the villagers in this you know main village you're in. And you, you know, you have a little quest line for each NPC, like they, one would like, like, you know, if you found a compass for him, that would be pretty cool. 
Uh, this guy wants you to find his family because you have finally, you know, because you've upgraded the the village. So now he has a now he has a home here in the village, and that that is way cooler than in the Greylands. So you need to find his family, and they have all been petrified. And I just thought it was kind of like you know a, a little bit of dark humor with. You know, him saying, oh, I can't wait to actually, uh, I can't wait to share this home with my family. But then, you know, basically just blissful ignorance. He doesn't know that his entire family is petrified. Uh, the first time around, I, I, I accidentally just smashed the statues of these petrified uh, monkeys. They are not monkeys. Um, I, don't, I, I don't even know what they are. They're like... Uh, lemurs of some sort. I don't. I don't know. They had some sort of name that I, of course, have forgotten already. Moki. I don't know. Uh, Moki might have been the name of one of them, or it is the name of their race. I'm not so sure. Um. But yeah, no. You actually just get to you know. Again, when I explore just a little bit further, I got to go into their house because there wasn't an entrance in. The initial, you know, where the you where you see them, you have to do some platforming, and then you can go into their house, and then you'll find a little teddy bear where you then go back to the village and show the teddy bear to this guy, and he says, "Oh, that's my fucking petrified teddy bear." I guess my entire family is also petrified, and then I now have to go find him in the in the village, in the not really village, in the house where his family is just a bunch of statues now I haven't actually done that I'm I, I should have I should have done that I don't know I was kind of interested in that quest line only because I you know I thought there was no good ending for that um, it also I don't know I like the fact that it dances around the you know the fact that oh you know each time I go to a new area for example the uh, the spider pit uh, you know of course the uh oh, uh oh. Uh, of course, the the required uh darkness uh place in a in a in a in a platformer game, in a Metroidvania game. It's of course there. It's a it's a pretty cool mechanic where you go around. I don't know. I was lost for quite a while because I just didn't. I don't know. There was one specific specific area I didn't go to so I had to backtrack a little bit and then I you know there was basically just the equivalent of a lantern right there uh, it's kind of cool how it's not like a permanent lantern you kind of have to like cycle through and change abilities on the fly but you know it's kind of it's really easy to do it's just the fact that you know you feel really fucking clever when you need to solve a puzzle when <laughs> with well, you know, changing your abilities, because your abilities are, you know, set to your three, uh, you know, if I'm square, circle, triangle buttons on the, on the, on the controller. I forgot to bow to the, the, those guys. I feel so ashamed. Um, ah, fucking sh- oh. My toe has not recovered, by the way. This is- oh. Uh, it has only gotten worse. Uh, the stubbed toe I got last night that I couldn't remember where it was from. Yeah, I, I, it's, uh, it's, it's painful. I cannot walk properly, and it probably just needs time to just rest and heal. Uh, which is not the greatest thing when I have, like, you know, six days work week. Um, where I have to stand up and walk around the entire time. Uh, I don't know, not the great- what the fuck was that physics? Um, so yeah, not the greatest, um, and I just, I don't know, I just, I just curled my, my, my entire foot against the wall. I don't it, it's kind of weird, it's one of those things where you don't really you don't really know how much you use literally all of your toes to walk 
until until one of them hurts like a motherfucker to use. It's pretty funny. It's pretty pretty cool. Pretty awesome. Uh, I'm lying. So yeah, in general, I'm I'm a big fan of uh, Will of the Wisp right now. Again, it's not that long a game, but for what it is, it's pretty fun. And also, I got it for quote unquote free. I I'm using a I'm using my my Broski's Steam library. Uh, so that's pretty cool. We found out I don't know, the Steam library. Okay, ah oh, shit, I can I can feel my toe way harder when it's when it's on the ground and I'm pressing on it with my elbows. Um. Uh oh. I don't know, I, I don't like the fact that I'm dancing with death here. Uh, I was about to say something. Um, God damn it. Uh, but basically, you go around and find these, like, wills of the wisp, so you gather all of them, so you can finally go and confront the, the guy. I don't really know how the lore works of, you know, the lore of everything. I'm not sure. But essentially, you just have to go around and... You know, fix the entire forest so the forest trusts you, I guess. There's also some NPCs out there who really don't trust you because you, your race, uh, which you don't really know nothing about, um, but your race is supposed to be like the forest protectors. And last time the forest was in danger, you did not protect it. Uh, which is why the forest is the way that it is now. So you, you still have to gain the trust of the people, and I'm kind of hoping to get some more lore about that here in like the end game. And by that point, I think the game is very, it gains a lot more, you know, replay value. Uh, I hope so at least. It's not. Not guaranteed whatsoever, um, but I hope so. I hope so. It's it's also just fun to play, um, but I I'm afraid a lot of the fun comes from you know uh, the progress of you know just having more versatile ways of you know moving. Uh, I don't know. Movement is a big thing in this game. I also found out that I, I don't know, the last, the, the last place I'm going to right now is the, uh, it's, it's Lake Lurnia or something? No, Lake, is that from Elden Ring? I might have messed my lore up. I thought I remembered a name, I might have not. Um, I'm going to the lake place, which I need the, I don't know, I, I, I might not actually need... Yeah, no, I, def uh, I definitely actually needed... Uh, you get an ability at some point where you get to actually breathe underwater. Which is pretty fire. Uh, it just feels... It, you know, it, it feels so much more like you are in one with nature. And, you know, you feel way more like you are the nature's protector when you, you, you're just free to go anywhere. And that... You know, even more so when you uh, when you have finally gone to the the peaks of the, you know, basically where you need to go for the end game. I, I I'm guessing um, at the ends of the Greylands where you get the ability to just dive through sand pits. Uh, so you can now move through sand pits. You can just breathe underwater. You can. If there's darkness, you just have, like, light with you at all times, and if you... You know, I, I just found out that I now have an ability to, uh... Or I, I equipped an ability that I bought from the village, so that I can now triple jump instead of just double jump. That's another thing. You also just get to double jump, um... You know, that's an ability you unlock at some point. It's not just something you have. Which is, again, there's so many small things, but when you add them all up, you feel so free. Which I think is the main selling point of the of the game, it's just the movement, like, the freedom of movement is crazy good. 
uh, for what it is. And also, I don't know, the way you're just moving so fluently, uh, it's, I don't know, I don't know, it, it, it's, it's good, it's goaded, it's pretty great. Um, especially when you get the ability to dash, which, again, that's the main part of, like, basically every fucking Metroidvania I've ever played. You know, the movement gets so much better when you when you get the ability to dash. Because there's just so much versatility and also like a wall climbing. I don't know. I can basically do anything right now. I just have to have the skill for it. So that, uh, now that I have all this, I now know that anything I'm doing, if I'm failing, it's just a skill issue. Uh, like, I have every tool at my disposal. It's just a skill issue if I can't get past something. And I've just hit that wall right now. It's it's getting a bit late, so I'm just gonna pick it up again tomorrow, probably. Um, but in this lake area... I don't know, I, I met the toad guy. And... You know, I just... I, I, I went somewhere and I just couldn't figure out how the hell to actually get where I needed to go. There were like three different paths, but all the paths were blocked. Uh, two of them way more than the other. Two of them were blocked at like, the, you know, the traditional way. It was just a, it was just a roadblock where you had to break the back of the, of a wall. Uh, God damn it. Um, so that's two of them, but I also, I, uh, there was another one where I just needed to, you know, m move more, and even with, you know, both triple jump and dash, it just wasn't enough. And I, I am 99% sure that that is purely a skill issue. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a thing I gotta get... It's, you gotta go see. I'm I, I'm not gonna look anything up if I don't, you know, if it's not actually necessary. Uh, I looked one thing up throughout this entire game, and that was in the second chase sequence in the in the Greylands in the, God damn it, in the home of the uh, in the home of the guy, where you know he's fucking stupid. But he hears a noise, he likes silence, so when he hears a noise, he needs to crush it immediately. Uh, so, you of course walk onto a couple bones, and then you just have to go run and hide behind things. Um, but apparently, he is very blind too. So you can just hide behind like one square centimeter of a flying tent. And that's good enough. Um, and I didn't know that, and I I was stuck there for like 15 minutes on the same, like dying every 15 seconds. Uh, not too fun, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna report back when I have some, when I have the ending figure out. Hopefully, I don't know I don't know how how long this game is, but I'm expecting I'm reaching the end game. That's how it feels like at least. Um, yeah, over and out, later.